Dr. Marcus Huber. Marcus Huber works with me at the Institute of Quantum Optics and Quantum Information Vienna. He's uh, since 2016 group leader at ICOHI Vienna. And his group is a world leader in the research field of quantum thermodynamics and quantum information. He got his doctorate with distinction in 2010 at the University of Vienna, where he also worked uh, uh, with the Marie Curie Fellow until 2012. Uh, in be between 2012 and 2016, he went on with his career working uh, in the UK at the University of Bristol in Barcelona, at the Universidad Autónoma de Barcelona and at the Institute of uh, Photonic Sciences and at the University of Geneva, thanks to uh, several competitive fellowships that he obtained, such as uh, the SNF Ambizione and the FWF Start Prize. Dr. Huber is also interested in the discourse about open accessibility, and uh, as that, he founded in, in 2016 the journal Quantum, Open Journal for Quantum Science. So today he will talk about quantum challenges, costs, and solutions for community-led publishing. Please. Okay, thank you very much for this kind introduction and for organizing this really nice event. I think it's a really important topic, and I feel like I'm probably preaching to the choir I also thank all the previous speakers for bringing up all the important points that we wanted to address when we founded Quantum. And one of the last answers to Jean-Sébastien could be, well, it's in our hands. It's in the scientists' hands. We need to do something. At the same time, like your proposed publishing experiment might scare a lot of people off. In the end, I think we need to have a larger debate about academia, about matricization, about academic career stability, and so on and so forth. And unfortunately, evaluation in terms of journal impact factors and traditional journal metrics still plays a role. And the question is, how can we tr transition away from the big players while at the same time give young scientists kind of a, a, a way where to maintain, uh, uh, I don't know, respectable publications? And SciPost is certainly one of those venues. We started a bit less ambitious, not covering the entirety of physics, but we started kind of our grassroots paper, uh, grassroots journal initiative, Quantum. As the name says, it is only aimed at anything connected to quantum physics, more particularly for anything that is posted on the QuantPH section of archive. Um, here you see, I do have a pointer. Yes, here you see some examples of uh, how our web page looks if you go there. And we also provide some LaTeX templates that are optional to use. So if you want to, your paper to look like a quantum journal paper, there is a chance. And OK, so but what was our mission? And indeed, our mission was addressing all the points that were addressed in the previous talks. So I don't have to go through it again. But um, we wanted a high quality, well-respected uh, community organized peer review. I will tell you a little what this means. And as all of the others, I mean, I might disagree on uh, the existence of offer processing charges. I think for a transitional period, they're fine as long as they're voluntary. Our main goal is, and it is the same op genuine open access principle that Jean-Sebastien mentioned, there should never be any financial barrier for any author or reader of publicly funded research. Um, furthermore, um, just as SciPost is already a successful experiment, we also want to provide platforms for public, I mean, the whole notion of journals and the way publications are evaluated and communicated have not much changed in the last 100 years, while modern technology, internet, and repositories have actually greatly increased the potential for new forms of scientific dissemination. And we want to also provide a platform for such experiments. And of course, as everything else, it should be uh, open source. It should be copyable by other um, sections of the archive or other open access journals. And uh, this is also what we want to do. So, but how do you implement such a thing in practice? So I'm just going to very, very briefly go through our current structure and how we uh, managed to achieve uh, our mission so far quite successfully. So what we do is we have an NGO, uh, by law, non-profitable organization running the journal that is based in Vienna. And part of the NGO is a steering board. That was kind of the 
founding here people were gathered and invited people that share the same principles for publishing with a representation of all countries that we could find and uh, it's quite a large board of respected scientists and us the founders as an executive board that basically does all the boring work and that should be strongly decoupled all the financial and legal matters strongly decoupled from the actual journal the actual science which we have uh, basically divided into two boards, coordinating editors, which would be kind of an editorial college in the side post, and regular editors that have slightly different notions of uh, or areas of responsibilities. And all of these are basically selected by the steering board and upon application. So it's not like these prestige editorships given out uh, to get people to labor for free, but this is actually a volunteer project in its entirety. Nonetheless, um, we have by now managed to hire uh, two uh, assistants, part-time employees that take care of accounting, taxes, social media, and editorial assistants, part of them in the audience. And uh, this is a picture of us founders. I did this together with Christian Gogolin and Lydia Del Rio. And we basically do all the boring work. And then here is a quick snapshot of our steering board that should basically take all fundamental decisions. Um, and um, our editorial board, where upon 130 received applications, we have at the moment selected 37 current editors. It's a big reserve list to basically expand if people want to if the need arises and to address the issue of scalability, I will later come back to the issues we're actually facing. And here, a smaller board of coordinating editors that is essentially acting as a democratic version of an editor-in-chief that take essentially final discussions on appeals, resolve conflicts, and basically designate the handling editors for uh, submitted manuscripts. So, but of course, we said community organized, and then we present all of these boards with all of these faces. So how do we actually get the community involved? And this is actually a non-trivial task. So what we set up right now and found to function quite well is to have a dedicated quantum Reddit. This is, I actually didn't know about this before, but this is kind of this page where people can post stuff. Um, I'm not an expert. <laughs> However, it's beside the point which technical platform we're using. The important thing is that there is this platform where anybody from the community can essentially suggest new policies, changes, or any kind of uh, new directions the journal should take, experiments to be undertaken, or new sections to be opened. And all of these are then summarized and discussed by the steering board, and they have since kind of driven and informed the direction of the journal. So uh, there, this is our way of community participation. Um, just to let you know how it is going, uh, we have uh, had so far 400 submissions in the past two years. I think our first articles were published beginning of 2017. And um, well, 132 of them published, which leads to a 52% acceptance rate. I'm not an imbecile, I mean, this is not the acceptance rate is, of course, not computed because many decisions are still pending. And um, here one must say, we try to be highly selective, not in terms of impact oracles that other big journals or high impact journals want referees to be predicting the future impact and number of citations this will generate. We also don't want any kind of target rejection rate skewing uh, any scientific uh, decision, so each decision is based on merit, yet we do want to have very high significant thresholds in order to actually compete with some of the metrics, metrics that the uh, high impact journals that we really want to be a competition to have. Uh, however, at the moment, of course, in the first years of a journal, we basically mostly get political submissions, people that really want to support this transition to a new way of publishing, and this is why we've had a pretty uh, amazing uh, submission selection of, like, so to speak, like leading groups that could have otherwise easily put their articles into these nature-type journals and whatnot. Um, well, 
what else do we do? So like, well, we essentially regularly analyze uh, the metadata from our journal internally, how much time things are sp uh, articles spend with authors, editors, and referees, and we make all of this metadata openly available and also call on the community or any technically versed people to take a look at this or propose uh, further improvements to how the system works. And well, this is just a snapshot. We even have a perspective journal where we essentially uh, post news and views and comments and also uh, our own meta-analysis. Uh, finally, in terms of uh, open access and transparency, um, our financing is actually just a Google Doc. Um, again, we would like to move away from Google, but for the moment, this is the easiest, <laughs> the easiest to share. But in the end, all of our accounting, every transaction from every bank account is entirely public. So if anybody's interested, they're uh, welcome to check it out. And it's entirely non for profit, so we don't even receive any, an hourly compensation for doing that. Um, nonetheless, we believe, and that's also what you've seen from, that's why I put all of these pictures there. The point is, uh, we anyway do a lot of free labor for the publishing. We all do some, well, some of us have some uh, associate editor positions for some journal, take some decisions. Almost the most of us in the room will have done, written some referee reports at some point in their scientific life. Or um, So in the end, we're all anyway involved for free in publishing. And so what, what we kind of wanted to draw upon these resources and get more people involved, because the workload per person is actually really manageable. Most of our editors don't handle more than one or two manuscripts a month. I mean, this is something that essentially a lot of people can do on the side. And we think uh, we don't even need so many paid positions. And we can let scientists handle the science. And uh, well, we will need some money for employees to take care of the organizational structures. Which now brings me to the actual challenges we're facing right now and things where we would like essentially to invite input. So first challenge, we're coming up with an impact factor um, which is surprisingly high, which basically means that we fear a spike in submission rates relatively soon and we might need to scale these operations up. This is also, we've been frequently attacked, even, well, attacked by but criticized by publishers like Elsevier or Springer when we met some of their editors or when they gave us feedback in some form or another to say, ah, what a cute little thing. Yeah, yeah, you can do community organized publishing if you handle maybe 200 papers a year, 300 papers a year, but then once you go to real publishing business, you will die and you will like, this, this will all be over soon because uh, you're, you're not scalable, right? Um, we have some mechanisms for scalability like a reserve list of editors and basically a large community and our restriction to the quant pH section of the archive also means is there's a limited number of submissions we can potentially get. Um, nonetheless, uh, if anybody here has ideas, we're, I'd be very welcome to hear them on what could be done for, in terms of scalability. Financing is the next big issue. I think this is another thing for the panel discussions. Are APCs okay as long as they're voluntary? Um, because somehow we want to reach a fair distribution of uh, who pays for this research. And it's, we have not been as politically active as, as for instance, Jean Sebastien. So we did not have such a widespread of uh, public bodies funding us. So we're kind of reliant on, uh, I must say it's 200 euros voluntary publication fee, which compared to other journals is probably still quite modest. Um, however, we're very worried about um, the fact that for institutional funding, we need to find models where there really are no strings attached. We don't want to put ourselves in a position where one day we're really reliant on the continued support from, say, the FWF uh, for continued existence. As great as they are, this, this might create even uh, ever so slight implicit bias for publications from this funding body. And so this is something I think we really need to talk about how to really detach the finances. For now, I mean, we're detaching it as our editors and our scientific staff has nothing to do 
with any of the financing questions. On the other hand, um, we also feel that our accounting is public. They could check. And the last thing is, how do we maintain sustainability? Because we see with a lot of these volunteer projects and political projects, you start out with a high degree of innovation and then at some point it becomes a day-to-day -day business. And it is, it, is, it is exciting, it's scientific publishing, we're all scientists and we're all enthusiastic about science, but at the same time, like everyday work grinds us down and in the end, the question is, how can we keep people motivated and ensure a fresh influx of new people? And anyway, this was supposed to be a short presentation on an exemplary case of how community-led publishing could work and the challenges we face for the panel discussion. And with that, I thank you.